أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين بارئ الخلائق أجمعين وأفضل الصلاة وأتم التسليم على سيدنا محمد وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين <تصفيق> السلام عليك يا أبا عبد الله وعلى الأرواح التي حلت بفنائك وأناخت برحلك عليك مني سلام الله أبدا ما بقيت وبقي الليل والنهار ولا جعله الله آخر العهد مني لزيارتكم Today is a very special night my brothers and sisters and we all need to take our hearts towards the land of Karbala where a night like this Aba Abdullah al Hussein and his Sahaba and his family gathered together and he gave them a speech and said if any one of you wants to leave then you are more you are of course i am happy for you to leave and all of them replied with how can we leave and leave you in in such a state in the land of karbala where the enemy are to an extent where they will be vicious towards you and your family and towards this particular path. So all of us, inshallah, we send our salutations and salams to Aba Abdullah al Hussein with the following dua. Assalamu ala al Hussein wa ala Ali ibn al Hussein. وعلى أولاد الحسين وعلى أصحاب الحسين جميعا ورحمة الله وبركاته صلوا على محمد وآل محمد Sisters and brothers in Islam السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته We conclude our series of finding solutions to the challenges that we face as a community tonight, inshallah. And at the end, inshallah, we'll wrap up and give a conclusion to the whole series, inshallah. Tonight, my brothers and sisters, I would like to discuss another important issue that is quite widespread in our community. However, I've tried to ask a particular question, a challenging question amongst the uh, mu'mineen is can actually a believer or can someone who is con God conscious be or suffer from depression or not? And this is an important question because individuals who suffer from this mental illness will believe that maybe they can't get close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Maybe there is a problem with their iman. There's a problem with their faith. That's why they are suffering from depression. And inshallah, we'll try to tackle this. But importantly, we'll try to talk about the root causes of depression. And I invite you again as a community to uh, discuss this very important topic, this topic that is uh, a taboo topic in the community. Um, hardly anyone comes out and speaks about the issues of depression and uh, mental health in general and mental illnesses in general um, and speak about the solutions and the challenges that we are facing in the community. So inshallah we will attempt to do that with your permission inshallah and we begin with like how we usually begin with is we ask what is the problem and 
then inshallah we'll be talking about the difference between sadness and depression what's the difference between sadness and depression and then we will ask the question who are the God conscious believers because we want to link between who is God conscious and those who are depressed can they both be at the same level you can be God conscious at the same time you are depressed is this are they are they both compatible with each other the root causes of depression we'll talk a lot about what is the root causes in depression and what is research actually saying about the root causes of depression and then what are the spiritual treatments for, for depression we as mu'mineen will need to look into these uh, into this carefully and of course at the end I will like to send a particular message to the community we'll start this journey inshallah towards finding out more about this particular illness with a three very loud salawat ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad So what is the, the problem here? And an increasing number of uh, the youth in the community uh, are suffering from depression, anxiety and other mental health problems. And the website Mind, if you've heard of it, it's a very large charity in the UK. They say around 7.8 in 100 individuals in the community in society in the UK actually suffer from depression and anxiety um, and that's quite a large number it's like nearly 8% of the population it's quite a large number of individuals another other stats they say one in six others say eventually one in four people will suffer from mental health issues so the stats are alarming and you've heard of this in the in the news and a lot of the um, the media outlets are actually now talking about mental health issues. The government is giving more money uh, to hospitals and uh, psychotherapies so that they can um, try to give individuals um, certain counseling so that, that they can overcome these particular challenges. So it's, a, it's quite a large topic, but what we're talking about today is mental health issues in the community. And, and I am glad that the IUS have done a survey on this. Uh, they've done a, a survey on mental health um, in 2018 and this is of course in this community and it's important we talk about what's going on in this community and they say that the vast majority of the participants they said maintaining one's mental health is important and mental illness is treatable they also said mental health problems are common within our community um, the survey also revealed that religious centers are not covering mental health awarenesses or awareness adequately. This is vital that we've got to focus on this particular issue that our centers are not really focusing on uh, raising the awareness on mental health. And over two thirds of the survey participants, they felt that it was hard to talk about mental health issues due to fear and stigma. Now, if an individual here in this crowd is suffering from depression, how comfortable are you, this individual, in expressing your emotions and your feelings about this particular illness? Have you actually spoken to your parents, maybe? Or have you spoken to your friends? Or have you actually uh, gone to the doctor and then spoke about it, speak about it? And so therefore, it's a, it's, a, it's a taboo topic, especially amongst the, the men, right? We find it quite difficult to express our emotions, right? And it's a problem. And it's an illness like any other illness. It's, a, you know, what we need to do, and inshallah, we'll talk about this more later, is we need to equate it with physical illness. We need to equate it with like kidney infection. So if you have a kidney infection and you have depression, they have to be the same exactly. If I have now kidney infection, in fact, some people might boast about it and say, oh yeah, I have kidney infection so that you can get some sympathy. But, but hardly anyone comes out and says, I have depression. No, it's because they get what? They are looked into in the community as individuals who are 
uh, there's something wrong with them. There's something wrong with their iman and there's something wrong with their uh, mental health issues. In, in, in Iraqi we say mkhabbal. Yeah, you're, you're crazy. Yeah, I don't know what the Urdu word is. Apparently one of the, I've been consulting one of the consultant doctors here regarding this lecture and he said there isn't even an Urdu word for depression. Right? It's, it's to that extent. Um, so, the next question is, if you feel low mood, are you actually depressed or sad? And I think it's important for us to distinguish between the two. Okay? Sadness is a normal human emotion. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created sadness in us. Right? So that when it comes to, for example, the, uh, the martyrdom of Abu Abdullah al Hussein, we become sad. So that we can shed a tear for the martyrdom. So we can see where there is justice and where is what? There is injustice. We can differentiate between justice and injustice through having this, individual, this feeling of sadness. And usually they say you, you are sad about something. So maybe you um, got bad results in your exam or maybe you uh, lost, uh, you, you didn't um, pass your driving license test or something like that. So then you become sad. However, depression is an abnormal emotional state. Remember, it's an abnormal emotion. Sadness is, an emo is, a, is a normal emotion. Depression is an abnormal emotional state. It's not even an emotion, I argue. It's not created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as part of our emotions. Emotions, you have happiness, you have sadness, right? But these things are an emotional state, it's an abnormal, it's an illness, yes? That affects our thinking, emotions, perceptions and behaviors in uh, pervasive uh, and chronic ways. And interestingly, what the, the, the medics say, that it's a loss, you get loss of interest or pleasure in daily activities for more than usually two weeks, right? So you, you don't really have any pleasure in coming out in the community, going playing football with your friends, you know, maybe not, not like to cook, I just want to sit down and sleep. Maybe you take long in the morning to wake up and things like that. You feel lethargic, extremely lethargic. And of course, consult the psychiatrists for, for, and the GPs for a better definition. But this is the definition they're giving. If you, if you do feel like this for more than two weeks, then please go and see your GP. But I like to ask a question here. What about Imam Hussein alayhi salam and Zainab alayhi salam? You know, in what they saw and what happened to Imam Hussein alayhi salam was quite tragic, wasn't it? Right? Did Imam Hussein alayhi salam feel sad or depressed? Yeah? And unfortunately, my brothers and sisters, we have this in the community and in a wider society that we actually mix these two value, these two terms and we say, oh, I, I feel depressed. But you're actually belittling this particular uh, uh, phrase and it's actually quite a, a major issue. It's an, it's an illness. So don't say if you feel sad, you feel depressed. No, right? Depression is an illness. Say, I feel sad. It's like people say, I, I, think I have, uh, I think I'm OCD. No, OCD, obsessive compulsive disorder, is actually an illness, right? It's a mental illness, yes? If you have OCD, that's serious, mate. So don't say if you're a, if you're a cleaning freak, right? And you, you, know, you like your, your bed very clean and everything, you say, oh, I'm a, I'm a bit OCD. No, just say I am a cleaning freak. But OCD is an illness. So let's... let's be mature, as I kept on saying this in the community. Let's try to be scientific in how we approach things and be a bit mature about these things. So, what about Imam Hussein alayhi salam and Zainab alayhi salam? And this is this is beautiful from Abu Abdullah al Hussein. And I, I hope that every individual sitting here, all the Husseinis, will memorize this. He said, "Hawn alayya ma nazala bi annahu bi'aynillah." Right? He said that I whatever has come to me now. Right? And all the suffering that I am going through, it is what? It's because it is in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is what Allah has chosen for me. So I am doing and I am following what Allah has chosen for me. It's in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? All, all of this particular revolution and everything that's been happening, 
this thawra of Imam Hussein, unnahu bi'ayn Allah, right? Whatever happens to me, whatever suffering I'm going through, it is in the eyes of the Almighty. And of course, as you very well know, Zainab alayhi salam said, ma ra'aytu illa jamila. I saw nothing but beauty, right? So when we come and examine these particular sayings from Imam al Hussein alayhi salam and Zainab alayhi salam, we find that of course they did go through the sadness emotion. Of course, Imam Hussein alayhi salam saw the suffering that his family went through, saw the suffering that his Sahaba went through, and of course he was sad, right? Because remember, when we examine the emotion of sadness, we then get the ability to distinguish between justice and injustice. When I see someone being killed in such a brutal way, I am sad. If I become happy, that's an, a, a, a problem here. And by the way, I, I call all individuals sitting here to do your duty in Amr bil Ma'roof and Nahi and in Munkar in explaining to those individuals out there who are celebrating on the day of Ashura, right? We have the obligation, my brothers and sisters, to explain to them in the best possible way. And we call for the best possible way, right? No anger, no hatred, and no confrontations. What we call is in the best possible way to explain with reason why tomorrow, the day of Ashura, should be a morning day for all Muslims. Because Aba Abdullah al Hussein. He sacrificed to save humanity, not to save the Shia, not just to save Muslims, but to save humanity, right? And there are so many resources and there are clips from uh, our brothers, the Sunni school of faith, who they actually describe this and they say that this is the day of mourning for Aba Abdullah al-Hussein, yes? So please, it is your duty to spread this particular message on that day. Sallu ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. So we asked the question, we said, can a God conscious individual suffer from depression? Yes. And we've got to describe who are the God conscious individuals. And you all know, you've, you've listened to so many lectures, you've heard about this, but we'll uh, spend a minute or so just describing them. And this is one of the verses. You've all read this verse in Surah Al-Baqarah, Alif Lam Meem, Bismillah Rahman Rahim, Alif Lam Meem, Thalik Al-Kitab La Rayba Feeh, Hudan Lil Muttaqeen. Who are the muttaqeen? Alladheena yu'minoona bil ghayb. Those individuals who what? Who believe in the unseen. Wa yuqimoona as-salaah and keep up prayer. Wa mimma razaqnaahum yunfiqoon. And those who spend out of what we have given them. Right? If you're that individual, you're a muttaqi. And there's a lot of descriptions. And then he says, Wa alladheena yu'minoona bima unzila ilayk. And he's talking to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Wasallam. He says, And who believe in that which has been revealed to you? وَمَا أُنزِلَ مِنْ قَبْلِكْ And what has, was revealed before you? وَبِالْآخِرَةِ هُمْ يُقِنُونَ And you have faith, you have belief in the hereafter. This is the description of a muttaqi. But generally speaking, a muttaqi is an individual who is absolutely God conscious. In everything you do in life, you are God conscious. If I take this glass of water, I am conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When I drink it, I, I send gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes? When I am an individual who goes to my work, or goes to school, or goes to university, as I am walking, I do istighfar. As I am walking, I say, subhanallah, I am conscious, absolutely conscious of the presence of the Almighty, whatever I do, right? When I am speaking to people, I am conscious of Allah. So therefore I have to speak in the best manner, right? This is a description of a muttaqi. Now, this particular individual who has this faith in the, in the ghayb of Allah, of uh, the unseen, right? He has belief in the unseen. No, none of us has seen Imam Hussein alayhi salam. None of us have seen Allah, none of us have seen a prophet, but we believe in them, inshallah, right? and also believe in the hereafter, and also we give to charity, and also we pray every time. This is a description of what? Of Al-Muttaqi, and there's more descriptions, right? So this individual, if they actually one day 
for more than two weeks, they feel extremely um, low mood, right? And disengaged from the community, sleep a lot in the morning. You know, can this individual who is supposedly a muttaqi, can they also suffer from depression? To answer this particular question, let's examine the root causes of depression and find out what are the root causes of depression. Now, this is not a comprehensive list by all means, right? I, um, I ask those individuals who are doctors amongst you and those who are listening also to forgive me that I won't have enough time to cover all the root causes of depression. But this is according to my simple, humble research. And of course, this needs uh, more than an, uh, an hour lecture to actually tap into. But inshallah, we will uh, try to cover uh, many of them. And of course, what uh, is important is that certain individuals may not be um, told by the doctor or diagnosed as having depression, but they are very close to being diagnosed. They have either poor self-esteem or low self-belief. Right? And those individuals usually have gone through a lot of difficulties in their life, per perhaps a tragic situation that's happened in their life, maybe a loved one, they lost a loved one, so therefore they go through this. And in, a, a psychiatrist may not, or a GP may not diagnose them with de depression, but may diagnose them with what? With poor self-esteem and low self-belief. However, they're very susceptible to uh, reaching the stage of um, depression. So, you know, I've tried to... Uh, try to be as accurate as possible. Uh, so this is the causes of depression uh, or the causes of poor self-esteem and low self-belief. Now, there is, an, there is a book out there, anyone who's interested in reading, and I've, I've tried to listen to a lot of it uh, through audio. Uh, it's called Lost Connection uh, by someone called Johan Hari, right? This particular book is very, very interesting to read. Uh, people like... Um, uh, I think Hillary Clinton and all those individuals who have read this and uh, other individuals, I don't like to mention their names in the majlis. Sallu ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Have read this book and they are extremely fond of it. This is one of the best selling books. And basically what this book says is that the gist of the whole book, it says that there are too many drugs, not enough understanding. Yeah, for depression. It's called lost connection. We're losing connection. And this really goes back to my first lecture, if you, if you were here. The real Husseini community. And we'll tap into this again, inshallah, just to emphasize this. Because he's saying, basically, that when you go to the doctors, what they do is they say, okay, do you tick this box? Do you tick this box? You have, you've been more than two weeks, uh, have got low uh, self-esteem, you've been sad for more than two weeks, da 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 then you, I diagnose you with depression, here are some tablets, right? I do not want to belittle the effects of antidepressants, yes? Please understand this, right? I don't want to belittle that. I have read that they, they can have a very good effect, but also, as I will show you now, certain individuals will say, no, they've researched that it's, it's more of a placebo effect, yes? But I want you to make sure that you, if you are feeling depressed, you do go to your GP and if they give you the medication, they diagnose you with this, then you take the medication because you listen to the doctor, right? Uh, but I'm trying to present the different point of views here. I'm trying to be as scientific as possible. So they, he says in his book, he says, contrary to common belief based on claims from pharmaceutical corporations, Depression is not the result of chemical imbalance. Remember, this is one point of view here, yes? So he says it's not, and he gives a lot of um, research, and he's traveled all over the world, right? He's traveled all over the world, met so many professors, researchers, and he's, he's come up with this particular conclusion. He also says that any effect one might feel from taking prescription antidepressant is likely to be due to placebo effect and they've done lots of studies and found out yes it's placebo effect but there are others who've done studies and they found no it's not a placebo effect yes again I'm trying to represent both sides depression he says is primarily caused by psychological and social not biological ones right in this particular aspect this is my point of view right and I am not a medical doctor but this is my point of view I am more into believing this than the others right and this is not basically saying it's not biological um, 
uh, issues, right? It's saying primarily. There could be individuals who are uh, suffering from depression because of what? Because of biological causes, right? But primarily, it's actually psychological and social factors. So inshallah, we'll, I'll take you to a, a journey towards finding uh, certain roots of uh, causes of depression. The first one, inshallah, it's the disconnecting from other people, right? And this is so much uh, research has been put into this. And if you remember, I did talk about individualism in the, my first lecture, if you were here, right? We talked about in society now, in our community, that we, we've been affected by the concept of individualism. What does that mean? That means, my brothers and sisters, that everyone is caring about themselves or their immediate family. People are not caring about what's going on in the community. People are not connected. So that's why he, that particular book called Lost Connection. We are not connected anymore, right? Everyone is busy. Is busy, yes? If there's anything that you're going to take from all these 10 lectures, and this is my last, is that I beg you to be connected. Even if you are someone who is an introvert, but you come with other individuals who are also introverts, and then perhaps you can form a conversation, you can connect to other individuals. And I don't mean connection via Facebook. I don't mean connection via Instagram. I don't mean connection via social media. That's not what I mean. I mean face-to-face -face connection. Yes, that's what I mean. Yes, that's why certain individuals are sitting at home. Of course, those individuals who have a legitimate reason why they're sitting at home to listen to the majalis, of course, they are excused. Those individuals who are sick, those are excused. Maybe they don't have a majlis near them, they are excused. But those individuals who have no excuse whatsoever, they're sitting down watching online majalis, right? Lost connection, right? Come here, see individuals, talk to people. You need that as a human being. Allah created you so that one of the reasons, so that you can communicate with your brother. So sisters, you can communicate with the other sisters. Psychologically is very important. Yes? And refer, please refer to my first lecture for more into this. And we, we did also say, in Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, in chapter 49, verse 10, he says, إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ What? Do we need a salawat? إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ إِخْوَةِ فَأَصْلِحُوا بَيْنَ أَخَوَيْكُمْ وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ لَعَلَّكُمْ تُرْحَمُونَ The believers are what? Are brethren's. You've got brotherhood. You've got sisterhood. Right? Connect my brothers and sisters. And what does Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa says, مَنْ أَصْبَحَ Or عن, عن Imam al-Sadiq says, مَنْ أَصْبَحَ وَلَا يَهْتَمْ بِأُمُورِ الْمُسْلِمِينَ فَلَيْسَ بِمُسْلِمْ Or فَلَيْسَ مِنْهُمْ He says, whomsoever does not care about the affairs of the Muslims is not amongst them. Right? This is from our Ahl al-Bayt. Right? That if you do not care about those individuals in the community. If you don't care about the Muslim Ummah, what's going on? This is so powerful. Just contemplate on this for the next 10 seconds. I'm going to go quiet. I want you to contemplate on this. Basically, he's saying, uh, if I believe in the Prophet or Imam Sadiq, salam, one of them, or from the Ahl al-Bayt, they're saying that if you don't care, if you're sitting at home, don't care about anything, you are not a Muslim. Contemplate on this. So therefore, there's a huge need, my brothers and sisters, to connect. And also, childhood loneliness. This is one of the causes of um, depression. And there's lots of papers to say uh, that childhood loneliness as a predictor of ado adolescent uh, depressive symptoms. And this is an eight-year longitudinal study. So they started when they were quite young and until they became at a particular age and they studied 
if they have been lonely and if they got any depressive symptoms. And they say our results suggest that enduring peer-related loneliness during childhood constitutes an interpersonal stressor that predisposes children to adolescent depressive symptoms. Basically, what they're saying is yes. Yeah. You know, if, if, if children are lonely, right, it can cause depression later on in their life. They can get depressive symptoms, right? And this is where we need this community co connection. This is where individuals need to connect. This is where we need activities for our kids so that they can connect. So we try to prevent these things happening in our community. And of course, technology and social media contribute to loneliness. We talked about this, didn't we? Right? We talked about technology and social media. People are comfortable sitting down in their homes right, with their mobile phones and they connect to this, they don't connect to other human beings, yes, this is the danger, that is why when you think, you as a parent think of giving a mobile phone to your kid, think again, right, because one of the reasons why depression is on the rise, especially amongst the younger generation, is because of this, yes, it's because of social media, that they believe that they can connect to social media and this part of us that yearns connection to other human beings is missing. And this developmental stage of the children, right, is critical that they need to develop by seeing other people. They need to develop by communicating with other individuals, not just at school, in the community, right? We need to come together, connect together inshallah. Number two, this is so important my brothers and sisters and whoever here is a parent, please do listen. One of the also main causes of depression are individuals who have parents who were absent or restrictive parents. Yes? What do I mean by restrictive parents? This is a very good um, study, right, by National Research Council and Institute of Medicine. And they, it's entitled Depression in Parents, Parenting and Children. And they say this, they say that depression is significantly associated. Remember, when they say significantly associated, they've done statistical tests, I believe, right? With more hostile, negative parenting and with more disengaged, withdrawn parenting. You know, when the dad comes home, doesn't see their kids, his kids, right? Both with a moderate effective side, findings are primarily related to mothers rather than fathers, right? They've done study more on mothers than fathers. But even so, inshallah later on we'll also talk about the disengagement of fathers. They also say depression in mothers, this is not just in children, but actually in mothers, right? Is significantly associated with less positive warmth parenting. You know, you know, oh mother, what does warmth parenting mean, okay? You know that it is time sometimes to talk softly to your kids, right? You know it is time sometimes to give a, 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 a hug before they go to sleep, even if they are being naughty, right? You know that there are times when you be, have to use empathy, you have to use emotional intelligence. Please refer to one of my lectures on this. You've got to use emotional intelligence with kids because believe it or not, you will become depressed and they eventually, when they grow, will become, will suffer from depression. Yes? So please be alarmed. This is a NHS um, website and it says the following, absent fathers, they link to depression risk in girls. And absent fathers, oh fathers, yeah? Work is not everything. You got to think about the well-being of your kids. You've got to think about their um, maturity, if they're actually going through uh, problems at school and, and what's your involvement, yes? What's your involvement in the upbringing of you? Don't just leave it to the mothers, right? You've got to be heavily involved. In fact, I say the following, it should be equal. The mother and the father should equally involve themselves in what? In raising up their kid. Not just say, I leave the upbringing to you, oh mother, I am going to go and do work. No, things have changed, right? You've got to be involved because research has shown that if you are not involved, then that 
can cause depression in your children. This is a, a study that says father enrollment in early child uh, rearing, uh, child rearing and behavioral outcomes in their pre-adolescent children. And what they say, they say confident fathers who embrace becoming a parent are less likely to have children who display behavioral issues before their teenage years. If you embrace of becoming a parent, right, and you know the real meanings of what it, what it is to become a parent, what it, there are the values of becoming a father, right, and how much I should care for my children, right, then it can actually have an influence on the, uh, your children. This is really interesting. In 1977, someone called Albert Bandura, he came up with a theory called what? Called the social learning theory. And he says the following. He says, people learn from one another via observation, imitation, and modeling. And I'm going to give you a list, right, in terms of parenting. And what you do at home, actually, will, be, will affect those individuals, uh, children at home. Sallu ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Sorry, the majlis will take a bit longer than usual today, but please forgive us and inshallah you are all in the path of Hussein alayhi salam and you'll get tawab. This is the uh, night of Ashura where we spend it in remembrance of Hussein and trying to tackle the, uh, the issues in society and in community. And if you are in favor of this, then we need a very loud salawat ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. So he says that if a child, or, or this is not exactly what he said, but a conclusion from uh, his theory says, if a child lives with criticism at home, yes, the child will have what? Inferiority complex. Yes. If a child lives with constant overreaction, like they, they, they broke the plate. Oh, you broke the plate. The whole, the whole uh, it's a massive disaster at home, right? shouting etc where we constantly shout at kids then child will li live with lack of tolerance when they grow up they say that if a child lives with too much discipline sometimes we're just too much have you done this have you done not not give them any freedom in working in thinking rest child will take life very seriously and if they fail they will become depressed if a child lives in a house with money being so important and they always listen to the conversation between mom and dad talking about money. Dad says, why have you spent so much on this? The mom says, well, this is because of this and that. And there's always confrontation, poor communication about money. Then what? The child will give importance to wealth and money in their life. If a child lives at home where the parents constantly fight, it will grow that it's okay he or she will grow that it's okay to fight with husband and wife and has negative view on marriage. Yeah, say, I don't want to get married. Some of the shabab say, I don't want to get married. I've, I've, I've been through so much with my mom and dad. If that's what marriage is, if that's the definition of marriage, I don't want to get married. Yes? So think again. What's important? Again, we go back to the Holy Quran. The Quran, my brothers and sisters, has so many lessons and values. Look at how Luqman, Luqman was a pious individual. Yes? Look at what Luqman he did. He, if qala Luqman, and if you want to really get lessons of parenting, go and read how Luqman uh, taught his son. Yes? I don't have time to go into it now, but go and uh, read about Luqman and his relationship with his son. وَإِذْ قَالَ لُقْمَانِ لِبْنِهِ وَهُوَ يَعِذُهُ Look what's interesting here. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't say وَإِذْ قَالَ لُقْمَانِ لِبْنِهِ And Luqman told his son, يَا بُنَيْ He could have said, Luqman told his son, O oh, my son. Right? He didn't say that. He said, وَهُوَ يَعِذُهُ مَوْعِذَهُ Right? What does مَوْعِذَهُ mean? It means that he set the right environment. He set the correct akhlaq in speaking to his son, right? With gentle, softly. Not, ta'al wulek, come here, sit down. Right? This is not the way to speak to the kids, right? And let's be honest, we've all done it as parents, yeah? You know, I'm not going to say I haven't done it. We've all done it as parents. But let's take lessons from Luqman. 
Luqman wa huwa ya'idhuh. Allah could have removed the idhuh. But he wa huwa ya'idhuh in the, in the most sensible, soft environment, technique, etiquette. Luqman spoke to his son. And also interestingly, he says, Ya bunay, O oh son. Right? And you know when you say, O oh son, right? And it reminds me of Ibrahim alayhi salam when he was speaking to his father or uncle and he says, Ya abati. This is, has a what? Has a softer approach, an etiquette, a soft approach. When you speak to your son, you say, Ya ibni, right? Ya abati. When a son speaks to your father, not call him Ali. You know, I've seen you know, kids speak to their father, Ali. And what are you talking about, Ali, right? Say, not even Baba, say, Ya abati. That's a bit of a formal way. But you can say, uh, don't call your dad in, in his name. Or don't, I also believe, you should perhaps sometimes call your son or daughter, right? Uh, you say, O bintah or O ibni, right? So they get this, or whatever, it's in your own language, right? So they understand that particular, and there is something gentle about this as well, establishes that relationship. So number three, the root causes of depression, disconnect from meaningful values. And what I want to explain is, and, and this is what um, also Johan Hari says, is that two types of values we have, the intrinsic and intrinsic. And I'm going to give examples of what actually this means. If you work, for example, in a charity community for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he doesn't say this, I say this, right? And the joy you feel when you help others, you are motivated by what? By these intrinsic values. It's something within you. You want to satisfy something within us. It's in our fitrah that we want to help others. And what's your intention? It's so that it's for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's so that what? It's so that you feel this joy, this happiness in helping others. You what? You're motivated by intrinsic values. However, if you work for a charity or community, to be in the spotlight and get what? And get rewarded or get fame, right? And you go out there and say, hey, look, I'm working for, you know, and your intention isn't to help others sincerely and it's not for the sake of the Almighty, then what? Then you're motivated by extrinsic value. Yeah? By superficial stuff. By materialistic rewards. This is what you're motivated by. Yeah? And studies show that the more in extrinsic valued people are, the more depressed they become. Because you just want every, things that are what? That are worldly, that are materialistic. You want to be, take happiness from the, the things you do in life. You want rewards for the things you do in life. Not for the things that you do for others. Not the way that we... And Islam tells us to connect to individuals. And the following verse, I don't have much time to talk about this, a whole lecture on this verse, right? But this is an amazing verse. It says, it basically describes and says, there's different stages of life, right? It says, When you were quite young, you wanted to play. And then, then it's actually entertainment, right? When you grow up, you become someone who wants, who what, has entertainment. And then zina, you want to show off these things. You buy the best of clothes. And then you show off between individuals. You might buy a really good car or whatever. And this is described in, in, in our tafsir. I read it in tafsir al-amthal as well. He says that sometimes what we then we do, we want, we reach a stage in our life after we've done all the showing off, after we've done all the entertainment, is what? Is we want to get married? Yes. Because I want to get happy. Remember all these stages, I want to become happy. When I give a, t a toy for the kid, they play with it. They want to become happy, right? And then later on in their, st in their life, when you go and give them a, a, a PS4 or whatever game, they want to play with it. They become happy. And then entertainment and then showing off, it becomes, they become happy, yes? They want happiness from this world. And then they will get married. They want to become happy. And then have awlad. They have kids. They want to become happy. But all this happiness is temporary, isn't it? Yeah? It doesn't last for long. You give a game to a PS4 game or whatever, uh, FIFA, right? And they play maybe a month and then later on they throw away. 
correct? It's, it's, a, it's a very temporary happiness. And for us as well, when you have a car, this spanking new car, and then after two, three years, I see X, my friend who has a better car than mine. I want to become happy, so I'm going to look for, to buy that particular car. And my car is, forget it, right? But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, كَمَثَلِ غَيْثٍ أَعْجَبَ الْكُفَّارَ نَبَاتُهُ ثُمَّ يَهِيجُ فَتَرَاهُ مُصْفَرًا He says, this individual, this farmer, this is what is an Arabic root word of kafir, is actually what? Is a farmer, right? A kafir is a farmer, right? Because uh, kafir, the disbeliever, is, is uh, known as kafir because they hide the truth in their heart. And what the farmer does is he implants the seeds, right? So... The farmer plants these seeds and he is looking for what? He is looking for this particular plant to grow so that he can become what? Happy. Yeah, so he can become happy. But then eventually this plant will become what? It will become yellow. And then he will get disappointed. So what's happened is that this particular process, once he became happy and then this happiness was temporary. This is what Allah is saying. It says happiness is what? Happiness is when you are connected to Allah. Happiness is when your salah, you are absolute contemplation with the Almighty. Happiness, everlasting happiness is in the hereafter. Here, you can be happy of course. You can get happiness. But don't think that you can get happiness from worldly issues. Otherwise, you'll be disappointed and be depressed. Yes? And what I mean depressed is actually clinical depression. Not sadness. Right? Because you're expecting too much. Number four, my brothers and sisters, inshallah, will end very soon, is domestic violence and child abuse. Now, I, I know that there are children in here, so I'm not going to talk, talk too much about this. I've talked about this in the first lecture, right? And, I, and, uh, and please do take this very seriously. Number five is disconnection from nature. What's happened to us? That because of the rise of social media, because of what? Because of my, this four letter word, busy, right? I am disconnected from nature. How many of us actually take time to contemplate on the existence and the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? You know what I think? I think we've normalized this. When I go out and look at a tree, I think, meh, it's a tree. So what? It's just a tree, isn't it? When I go and I go to the mountains and things like that, I think, yeah, okay, it's my mountains. Yeah, whatever. When I am walking and I hear, or when I wake up for Salatul Fajr and I hear the singing of the birds, then, yeah, just normalized everything. Let's be a bit more conscious and realize this is the beautiful creation of the Almighty. Appreciate the creation. Don't get disconnected from nature. I will say this, and I am not a faqih. But I will say this, that I believe it's mustahab for you to watch nature programs. You know David Attenborough's programs? They're amazing. Yeah? It's, honestly, it's amazing. The stuff he shows us, the power and the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala out there in the wild and also under, in the sea, right? In the oceans. And there are things that Allah has created that we're just unaware of, we're just unconscious of. But Allah is saying, I've created all these things. Look at what he says in chapter 31 verse 10. He says, He says he created the heavens without pillars. He could have easily created heavens with pillars, right? With certain screens so we can't see what he's created. But he said, I've created all this so you can see. Wake up. Don't be disconnected from my creation. He says, and put mountains upon the earth, lest it might convulse with you. And he also what? He says, um, And he spread it in animals of every kind. Have you looked at the creation of the Almighty? The different species, the millions of species that we have out there. Let's connect to nature. Sallu ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. And also, the final um, cause of depression, as I, as I understand it, and there are others, right? There's no time in describing them, is what is illnesses. There are other underlying illnesses. Certain individuals might have other illnesses that might cause depression. Yes? 
And this is also important to note. So, can, we, can a God-conscious individual believer suffer from depression? I'm going to give you 10 seconds for you to answer this question, inshallah. So this individual we described as the muttaqi, who is God conscious, Allah is everywhere, right? He describes himself as a muttaqi. And we've described the root causes of depression. We've talked about, you know, so, uh, you know the causes might be that he's had a not very good uh, upbringing. There is this, uh, this connection from, with his, his parents. Maybe his father wasn't much involved. We talked about this connection from nature. We talked about individualism, disconnection from the community, etc. Could this individual also be a muttaqi, an individual who's been uh, suffering from depression. So I say yes. However, what al-muttaqi will do is strive always to get better. Those individuals who are sitting at home, not looking for a job, they're depressed, but not looking for a job, right? Those individuals who are disconnected from the community, disconnected from nature, disconnected from everything, right? But they're sitting at home, right, and not doing anything about it, then I will say no. You gotta get up. As a mu'min, as a believer, get up. I know it's difficult. I'm not trivializing depression at all. But if you get up, try to do something about it because you are hurting yourself. You gotta be gentle with yourself, right? Go out there and get treated. Go out there and see a GP. Don't suffer in silence. Enough suffering in silence, right? Go out there that you live in a country which can provide you with treatment. Go out there and try to find treatment. But sitting at home and also hiding it from people, hiding it from, it's not a good thing. Right? It's not a good thing. Speak to someone about this. Don't suffer in silence. And I'm going to go through very quickly spiritual treatments for depression. And I, please refer to one of my lectures. I have this theory where I've taken from the power of now, Eckhart Tolle, if anyone's into these things, that you are not your mind. And I've linked it with, with Islamic values of our fitra, of, and what I basically say is that don't believe in whatever your thoughts tell you. You are not your thoughts. If I have a thought now, I'm saying that majority people are asleep here, right? Then this thought may not be true, okay? But it's a thought in my head. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran that the, the shaitan comes in a form of what whispers, so therefore thoughts, right? So you have those, this muttaqi has the ability, if you're suffering from depression and you're a muttaqi, right? Then you have the ability, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Holy Quran that you can distinguish between the whispers of the shaitan and what? And what is your real thought and what is, um, what is the right thought and what's the wrong thought, yes? So this is the muttaqi. Those individuals who are muttaqeen, إذا مسهم طائف من الشيطان If a shaitan comes and whispers in them, تذكروا, they become conscious. فإذا هم مبصرون We need to go in the state of what? Consciousness. We need to tap into the state of consciousness. If I ask you, who are you? You are this conscious individual. Right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created you in that state of consciousness. But however, you have the ability to go into an unconscious state. Yes? What I mean is not physically, I mean spiritually. Right? So believe that your thoughts are not yours. When it comes to whispers in your head and says do this and do that and you become even more depressed, say no. These thoughts are, could be from the shaitan or could be from other things. I will not believe in these particular thoughts. You've got to have the ability to distinguish between these thoughts and the others. But please refer to this particular lecture. Also importantly, prayers. As-salah is a, is, a, is a shifa. Yes? But only if we pray it properly. And as you know, I've done a lot of research on salah. Right? Um, and I have a book on it. And, and also, you don't need a book to know about the importance of salah. Right? So, as-salah is vital. Also, Meditation. What's happened to us about meditation? You know, I have this thing, which I always say, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prescribed for you, I, and everyone here, five times of meditation per day. Spiritual meditation. And even better than mindfulness and all these stuff that are going on out there. 
We have the salah that is a form of meditation, isn't it? When I am in that state of praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is a form of meditation. Whereas us, we are not connected to our salah. When I say Allahu Akbar, there's all sorts of things that come to my head. Let us practice to reach that state of khushu. Yes? And of course, also mindfulness. If you're into these things, go ahead and do it. Right? Practice mindfulness and importantly be in the present moment. It's so important to be now because there's nothing wrong with the now. Yeah? There might be something wrong with the future. There might have been something wrong with the past. But there's nothing wrong with now. And if there is something wrong with now, then, then try to solve this particular issue. Right? But as a mu'min, always be in the state of the now. You might plan for the future. Absolutely plan. But you don't need to worry about the future. In fact, a mu'min shouldn't worry at all. Right? And if things happened in the past, and I emphasize this again and again, let's not isolate those individuals who've done mistakes in the past. Let's forgive them. Let's not judge them, right? Only if they are serious about asking forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? If they ask forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and rectify the mistakes that they have done, welcome them to the community with an open arm. If you are in agreement with this, please say a loud salawat. As we said, be conscious of the shaitan's whispers um, and also comprehend this, the purpose. Why, why, why do we live in this world? Who am I? What's the point of my existence? Just try to contemplate on this. And then you'll reach a stage where you trivialize this world, right? And as the hadith says, you know, life is a prison. Yes? And thereafter, it's freedom, isn't it? Is she filming me? Right? Life is a prison, isn't it? Right? So therefore, it's a very important for us to what? To trivialize this life. Right? Whatever we do, don't take it seriously. Because the hereafter is where your fate is. Yes? The hereafter is the complete eternal faith. Eternal phase in your... But here now, it's, it's a limited life you have. Right? So trivialize it. Be gentle to yourself. And don't forget that Allah is close to you. And this is so important for those who are suffering from depression, right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that I am closer to you than your jugular vein, which is right here. And if you cut the jugular vein, what happens? You die. So if you cut Allah, you die. This is the, this is the verse, isn't it? Right? Let's contemplate on it. Don't cut Allah from you. He is there. If everyone is against you, you are suffering from depression and you tell your parents, people say, oh, man up, come on. If everyone turns, if the community turns against you, trust me, you have Allah who is with you every single moment of your time. When you sleep, Allah is with you. When you wake up, you say, alhamdulillah, shukran lillah, subhanallah. Not check your Facebook. Yeah? And finally, we talked about practical gratitude. Please refer to the second lecture, if I, if I remember, be, and there's so much research on gratitude, right? Be grateful to the Almighty for what He has given you, for the blessings He has given you, and reach that stage of gratitude, of a shukr. And I heard some of the scholars say this, that if you want to treat depression, right, always say this particular dua. This dua is for which Prophet? Prophet Yunus alayhi salam, when he was inside the whale, he said what? He says, La ilaha illa ant. He's talking to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. La ilaha illa ant. Subhanaka inni kuntu min al Yes? Continuously say that. When you wake up from, from uh, you know, sleep, say, La ilaha illa ant. Subhanaka inni kuntu min al And he's there. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is there. So my final issue regarding this issue, and I, and I again beg your forgiveness for taking long time. This is my last lecture and uh, inshallah you'll, you'll be happy to see me go inshallah. Message to the community. I beg you, O community, remove the stigma from about regarding mental health issues, right? Let's talk about mental health issues in an open environment. Let's have those individuals who are suffering from mental health issues, welcome them with an open arm. Yes? Let's not have the stigma. Let's equate, as I said before, equate physical illness with mental illnesses. Right? If you get a broken leg, right, why do you get sympathy on someone who's suffering from depression? Maybe it's not his fault. Maybe he was abused as a child. Or maybe they've gone through so many difficulties 
in their life, right? Maybe if you haven't, then those individuals have. And that is their bala, and that's your bala. Allah's chosen this bala for you, and He's chosen this bala. And remember, it's a calamity. Depression is a calamity, right? It's a bala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala might have put it onto you. So therefore, you become sabr, you become patient. But the, why should you suffer more than this individual who's broken his leg? It's unacceptable in the community, right? And I call the community of Manchester to be the first community out there to actually do something about this and come and talk about it more. Individuals who are actually suffering from depression, come and speak to those individuals out there. And I'm happy to say that you have individuals who are great in your community. And I'm going to mention a name, Dr. Fahim Nakvi, who is a wonderful individual, right? Is a consultant psychiatrist who is in this community, who's provided his service, right? And they have, a, they have an email, etc. You speak to um, our US uh, committee members for further information, and they can provide you the email. And he provides free consultations, right? And he is someone who will take you towards... It's a signpost, right? You will say, look, you need this and this. Please go to this particular aspect. What you need is therapy. What you need is this. There are people who are providing their services. Please go and see them. So this is the end of my series, my brothers and sisters. And I just wanted to take two more minutes of your time just to recap about what we have talked about. But um, uh, I'd like to say first that, you know, please forgive me if I've offended anyone or insulted anyone. Uh, in any of uh, my content or lectures, but I've tried my best to be uh, an individual who gives uh, the, uh, certain sides of the stories, be as scientific as possible, and of course give so much Islamic content in the name of Abu Abdullah al Hussein. And I and I ask Abu Abdullah al Hussein also to to forgive me and to take, uh, of course, this as an opportunity that if I have uh, stepped up the mark, then I am, inshallah, someone who is very much uh, has a lot of shortcomings, but this is the series we started off with talking about the real Husseini community and the practical start, practical stuff that we take, came out from this is of course what we said about bringing the community together. Let's not sideline individuals and every single person here is responsible and we all collectively will come in front of Allah and Allah will say you the community, then he will take us individually aside and will make us accountable for what we did. So if there's a problem out there, you, me, and everyone else is responsible. Then we talked about gratitude, the importance of practical gratitude and the higher status of gratitude. And we explained that in the Holy Quran. And as a community, we've got to all collectively send, uh, have always be grateful for the blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and it's a higher status than the taqwa. We also talked about the dangers of the far right, didn't we? And what's our role? Our role is to try to combat this uh, this rise and also importantly we try to uh, bring those individuals from other communities have them talk to them about these particular issues because they have a common interest in this right and we must do something about this because they are on the rise power of debating and dialogue and the importance of trying to talk to each other communicating dialogue we talked about how a, pa a father and mother should talk to their children and, and a dialogue between a mother and father etc and also we talked about wearing a headscarf, the importance of a headscarf. I revealed the, the different studies and I hope you go back to the lecture and try to take things out of it. We talked about the rise of social media amongst the youth um, and the dangers of this and what's causing. And we gave certain practical solutions. And also we talked about reforming spouse selection and how as a community we've got to try to uh, come up with different ways to uh, make sure that our youngsters don't go to do other things, for example, temporary marriages and other things that are not, in my opinion, this is my opinion, not supported and it's not healthy for the community. So we've got to come up with new uh, reformed ideas that are permissible in, in Islam so that we can introduce our, you know, the brothers and the sisters so that they can be a potential spouse. Uh, we also talked about teaching our children about relationships and we didn't record this, of course, but we talked about um, the concept of RSE and what is our uh, relationship and sex education. We talked about what is our role as a community because it's going to be enforced in September 2020 and we don't have much time. And we talked yesterday about the concept of Shisha and the rise of 
uh, smoking shisha among the youth and we gave certain alternatives and the dangers, medical dangers of shisha. And we talked about the shisha hat trick, if you remember. We talked about the health wasting. We talked about the money wasting and we talked about the time wasting. And we finished the series with talking about mental health and depression. And we gave, as you uh, have heard in the last hour or so, we talked about uh, the causes of depression and can a God conscious believer suffer from depression and we answered yes but there must be certain attempts by this individual and the individual in the community to try to get treatment inshallah. Um, I finally would like to thank everyone who's attended to these majalis. I again ask you for forgiveness and my shortcomings. I'd like to thank all those individuals who in the IUS who've worked so hard uh, regarding uh, making sure that these majalis go in the best possible way and inshallah we are all individuals who will take uh, these particular issues seriously and act on them because the measurement is that if in, uh, next year if we talk about the same things that means we haven't progressed right so let's take these seriously in the name of Aba Abdullah al Hussein, who will inshallah remember more and have inshallah shed some tears uh, this amazing night where we all should take our hearts towards the land of Karbala, inshallah, I invite Sayyid Ali al-Hakim and forgive me for taking long time uh, to recite the musibah and please uh, participate in this uh, particular musibah and aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum assalamu alayka ya aba abdillah wa ala al-arwah allati hallat bi fina'ik wa anakat bi rahlik عليك مني سلام الله أبدا ما بقيت وبقي الليل والنهار ولا جعله الله آخر العهد مني لزيارتكم السلام على الحسين وعلى علي بن الحسين وعلى أولاد الحسين وعلى أصحاب الحسين جميعا ورحمة الله وبركاته والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته صلوا على محمد وآل محمد